Hi, Helen. Hello. How you doing? Hello, hello. Hey, that's, everyone. <laughs> that's a way to get woken up on a Friday right? morning, right? <laughs> I saw something about a cozy stream. Well, first we let Hel Helen say hello. Uh, but hi, everyone. It is Friday. That means it is time for Paint and Slay here for Idle Champions, where uh, Lauren and I sit down and we have some fun painting some minis of creatures that you can find in game. And today we're going to be doing this fantastic displacer beast, which I am ever so excited to paint up with you. And the cool thing is, is this is going to be a one and done episode because of um, what we're going to be doing with this one. But before we get into it, do we have any announcements that we want to share with our good folks in the chat, Lauren? Oh, I should have thought of that before I you asked know. me that question. You ask me that every single week. I, I should be more prepared. <laughs> uh, so we do We do have Martin as our wonderful moderator in chat. So if you do have any questions about Idol Champions, about painting, uh, about the weekend, go ahead and ask those with question in big capital letters so that he can grab those and put those into our little backstage document because we're often hardcore looking at a mini and mm. sometimes miss what's going on in chat. Also, this weekend is your final weekend of the Great Modron March. So if you have not had a chance to unlock Nor Nordum. Now, mm. now is that chance. Spend the weekend unlocking Nordum. Uh, and as a reminder, Monday is a holiday in the United States. Um, most of Codename Entertainment will still be around doing things, but because I'm American and... So uh, <laughs> well, yes, both yeah, of us are, but are. the you reason I'm bringing... Around. The reason I'm bringing it up is because um, the one stream we normally have on Mondays is uh, weekly patronage at noon that will not be happening so come back on tuesday after all of the we have streams today and we've got garwar tomorrow and then and then you get a couple days off for the holidays mm -hmm. and that's all i can think of to say I if i have true. forgotten anything someone will ping me i'm sure yeah there we go so all right we're gonna jump into it and per usual we are using whiz kids minis from the D D nolzer's marvelous miniatures line the official D D miniature collection and this is for those of you who may not know a displacer beast, which I'm actually excited to show you how to paint because typically displacer beasts are shown as these black cat-like creatures. And people always think, okay, so we're painting the mini black. Yes and no. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to show you different ways to paint creatures that are technically black, but give them a little bit more visual interest as a mini as opposed to slap on some black and call it done. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. So it should be a lot of fun. And again, because it's just this one, mini, well, it's a medium miniature, uh, but there's not as much in terms of detail work and everything. We should be able to get this one done. I'm also noticing today. at this moment, hmm. your tentacles and my tentacles are going in two completely separate directions. And like, I was just, a, yep, because <laughs> this miniature is notorious for having its tentacles do um, a little bit of different things because of how loopy and lanky they are, you can actually, and we showed you this uh, our last episode with the Modrons, that you can manipulate the plastic. So if you want to have fun and have these tentacles pointing in different directions, then that's where you're going to dip this into really hot water, hold the tentacles in the position you want them to be pointing, and then dip it into really cold water, let the plastic freeze back up and harden back up, and then you can have your tentacles in different positions. So uh -huh. we are going to have fun of our tentacles are pointing in different ways. It's still all good. 
we'll still okay. be able to do this. But I just found it fascinating when I was yep. looking at it. I'm like, wait, uh, wait, wait, hold mm-hmm. on a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're different posts. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, okay with that. Me too. It'll be fun. Gives them a little bit of variety too when you like try and do like a whole, um, I guess they'd be a clouder since they're cat-like, a clouder or a pact or a pride. Um, so that being said, remember these always come primed ahead of time. So you don't have to do the priming on these. You might have to do a little bit of mold line work. Mine had some serious mold lines happening. So it looked like four different pieces shoved together. Uh, if Ooh. that ever happens, you can always take, this is just a simple emery board and I've cut it on a very steep diagonal to create a finer point. You can just go in with smaller miniatures like this and actually buff down your mold lines to help bring them down to a lower level. If you buff it enough, you may find that you have to do another coat of primer, however. So do keep that in mind. Luckily, I was able to thin it down enough where I'm pretty happy with it. And again, we paint these more to be about the three foot rule where if you hold it out three feet and it looks good to you, you're good to go on the table. Uh, But if this is something where you're going in for competition mode, then you can do more advanced things like using a mold line remover, which I have over here. But because of the angles on this particular mini, it's a little tight. Uh, The other thing you can do is take one of those hobby knives and actually peel the mold line away using the tip of the blade. That you must be extremely careful, pay attention, use knife safety, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you drop the knife, don't back. try, oh don't God. try to catch it. Never Do catch not try to catch it. This is, this is a professional oboist who has dealt with knives, literally her yeah. whole knife. Super, super, super sharp knives. That yeah. is my best piece of advice. If you drop a knife, let it fall. Yeah. You can replace the knife. You can't replace your hand. Yeah. Anytime something with a blade falls down, you're supposed to jump back and just, you know, hands up, jump away. That is... Mm even cooking safety. So keep that in mind, but we're going to jump into, we are going to jump, we're going to jump into (laughs) painting these displacer beasts. So we are going to start with uh, some black, but we're also going to want to grab a little bit of bloody red because I like to always paint in these mouths first because then we can kind of outline around it later on. So we're going to make a nice deep red and we're going to paint the inside of the mouth. We're also going to do the inside of the ears with this darker red tone. And then we'll get into doing more of a wide brush stroke, yuck, yuck, yuck of colors as we get into it. So I'm going to aim for, let's call this a nice Bordeaux red. A what? Bordeaux. I don't know. Like a wine. The wine. Oh, okay. I, that wine I have not heard of before. I I totally thought you were going to say a good Merlot, but I, uh uh-oh. No. Oh, my, I gotta, Uh I gotta poke my bloody red. Hold on a second. It's decided to be obstinate. Fortunately, I have toothpicks. There you go. I'm doing the thing. So this is the thing that happens when every once in a while you go to squeeze one of these tubes (gasps) and a little bit is dried on in there. And and you're like, oh, this is, this is going to go bad real quick if I'm not careful. So there we go. Yeah. There we go. Um, I always keep. So I I missed. (laughs) Yeah, I missed how much we're doing to how much we're doing. I'm while doing I was... equal parts on this one because I want like a really deep red for this one. Okay. Um, hold on, I need a mixing, mix and brush. All right, that I got. It was the the toothpicks I had to grab at the last minute. Mm, there you go. Yeah, this is like a really, it's almost like a a dried blood red. Oof, yeah. I might do just a touch more red, just a touch more. Yeah, this is really, really dark. Yeah. I might do a touch more red as well. A touch of red. A touch of red. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, I knew that as we were going to do this Displacer Beast, we were going to have a lot of other colors besides black. You had talked mm-hmm. about that, and it made a lot of sense. And then you you listed off the colors, and I went, Huh? That is a lot of colors. Oh, yeah. okay. So yeah. I am very, very excited about this. Okay, so I'm I I'm starting to swatch on my wrist so that people can see the color once mixed. So that is the red we're going for. Okay. Actually, I think I'll mine. My hair. Mine is super close. Yeah, you're. <laughs> I think mine is more of a a, a darker burgundy, but it's work. now it'll it's now a dark red work. instead of a black with with spots. <laughs> Like my displacer beast just ran away. No, I just put it someplace safe. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so you taking said... the detail brush, we're going to paint this into the mouth. Don't worry about the teeth. If it gets on the teeth, that's totally cool. And let me 
it's going to blur a little bit while I'm painting and I need to see the mini, but the mini is also very white. So there's splashback happening. That'll be changed quite soon. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to get the mouth. And then the inside of the eyes. And just the inside of the ears. I, I made way too much of this paint. That's okay. <laughs> I'm realizing now, like, I, I've mixed a ton of this color. Oh, well. Not the end of the just, world. just, you know, paint your nails, too, if you want to really get a nice goth <laughs> vibe going. The, the, the darkest of red nails. The darkest of red. There we go. And I'm not worrying about being neat around this because I know I'm going to edge back around with black. Mm. My foot is caught around a cord. <laughs> if I suddenly fall oh, over, no, it's not I stuck. And the same thing, we're going to do the inside of the yas. Okay. And meanwhile, I'm going to take a second and look at chat. Go for it. Oh, uh, and I just saw this in chat. Lock Warden says, as a beginning mini hobbyist, thank you for that gem of an idea about cutting around oh, yeah. or cutting down emery boards. Had never considered that. Yes. Uh, yeah, that is that is an excellent suggestion, not just for the um, the size of what you need, but then just the practicality of not going out and having to buy a specialized yeah. tool, you know, get yeah. get yourself something you can cut up and it's going to cost you a buck. I mean, if you're getting into the hobby of mini painting and if you're doing terrain crafting too, you can also check out my YouTube channel. I have tons of videos with lots of helpful tips and uh, tips, lots of helpful tips <laughs> and uh, basically supplies that you can find around the home to use for your crafting and your painting needs. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So those are the ears and the mouth all done with a detail brush. So I'm going to rinse my brush now. Yep. Before we move along and then I'm sure we're going to be using that detail brush again. Mm -hmm. This is tiny, tiny, mini. Yes. And then we are going to go straight to black. Straight and we're going to, to paint black. the displacer beast black. We're not going to paint the base black, but the displacer beast. All right. So it will be getting a coat of black. Which makes sense. I mean, yeah, yeah we were just talking about it being a, um, it being a, a multifaceted black, but you know mm -hmm. what? Having a black base makes sense. And I am I'm, I'm actually even gonna water down my black because it's looking pretty yeah. chunky. If, if your paint comes out thick like toothpaste, it means you need to water down your paint with clean water. You want it to be a nice um, you know, as I've said before, maple syrup type of consistency. Because if you go in with super thick paint, what you're gonna do is start filling in the details of your mini because acrylic yeah. paints have plastic in it basically. And when they dry and they harden up, that layer of thick paint will also harden up and fill in those gaps and fill in those details on you so that you actually start blurring the details of your miniature. That's why you wanna make sure you are thinning your paints when you're doing base coat layers like this, especially. Um, there will be times where like, if I am dry brushing, I'm not thinning that paint because I'm already thinning it off the brush with the paper towel. So there's really no need to thin it that much. Or if I am doing um, fine detail work, I find I prefer the control I get with a thicker paint. So I tend to not thin my paints when I'm using my little bitty detail brush because yeah. it's just yeah. um, a little bit more predictable for me if it's not runny. Yeah, that little bit we just did on the inside of the mm -hmm. mouth and the inside of the ears, I didn't even think to yeah. uh, to thin it out just because it was so little. Yeah. It was so tiny. It was wee. Even even though I put way too much on my paper plate, but you know what? That's fine. That's okay. <laughs> it happens. Your paper plate will now have a cool color. Yeah, exactly. And luckily, these tentacles are malleable to an extent. So if you need to lift a tentacle up and out of the way, do it. It'll just be easier. Yeah, talking about the the amount of paint on the palette. Um, one of the reasons I'm a, a little okay with whoopsie too much on my palette is what I've learned about myself over the last 29 episodes mm -hmm. is um, I was being, I was trying, not thrifty, but I, I didn't want to have too much paint like wasted. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of times in where I almost got into trouble because I didn't have enough of the paint yeah. mix. So I've I've been trying to let myself, hey, if if I put too much on the plate and I've 
wasted, quote unquote, some, that is fine. It's not like these paints are so ridiculously expensive. They are, they're very reasonably priced. Yeah. And if, if I got to go buy another black, but I get, I get way enough of the color that I wanted to paint my mini, I am okay with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But that is something I had to learn about myself that I was, I was trying to be exact. And this is, this is, I'm not good at that. <laughs> Do, do, do. Oh, now, now we're into the tentacles again. Here yeah, we are. The tentacles and the angles. Yeah, Lots it's been a while angles. since we've had some tentacles. Oh yeah, on the show. I'm like, but I'm I'm thinking of it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was show. my mental pause. I'm like, but I just I'm like, never mind. Nope, that was an off screen. <laughs> Uh, Devil Crayon wants to know, will there still be new patron challenges on Monday? Well, yes. I, I, I figure you're, pro you're half joking about that, but yes, there will be new patron challenges. There just will not be me having a show about them. So, hey, hey, folks, you're on your own for a week. <laughs> I expect you all, I expect you all to do a really good job of getting through all of the patron challenges now that many of you have four parties to do it with. And I want a full report on how you did in uh, in a week and a couple of days. When I come back, I want to know how many challenges did you complete? Sounds like a report. Mm-hmm. I would like a report. 500 please, please have a... citations and screenshots. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please have a double-spaced... A uh, printed report. Times New Roman on only. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now we're showing our age. <laughs> People are like, print the report. What the heck are you talking about? Why? I'm just going to send you a PDF. Well, hey. back in my day. Back in my You know, I would have loved to have had that option when I was a teacher because, boy, howdy, I felt yeah. bad for my students. My handwriting's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> And it just, it did waste a lot of paper, like, especially when, when computers got ubiquitous enough that you could actually use them for reports. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, but you still have to go ahead and print it out for something. It's like, but, but, but why? But, but, That's but, but, the whole, yeah. the whole yep. point of this is that you don't have to, and it's easier. And uh, ah. I had a parent come in for a parent teacher conference and they had printed out all of our emails together. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's impressive. <laughs> just because they wanted to have the notes in front of them, and I just was sitting there, I was like, okay. All right. I mean, maybe they didn't have any I, way of I having a, a... It took a, me by such surprise, though. She came walking in with this stack of papers, and was like, was she like bringing in late work or something? And it was, no, it was the emails. She mm. just wanted to make sure she had all the information in front of her. And didn't have an adequate way of displaying that, was, that information on a phone or something phone, yeah we didn't have that uh feature on phones quite yet oh yeah. okay okay yep. that was that makes a little more sense yeah. then it's still kind of a it's so, still, all right that's just it it's like now it's like you did what for an email mm -hmm. i am going to switch down to a detail brush as i get around the face with the black but right oh now, that makes sense right now i'm still i'm still working on tentacles i haven't even gotten to the tentacles i was doing a legacy I kind of started at the back and I've been working my way forward. And because my tentacles are more uh, upwardly facing, mm -hmm. it, it has included going after the tentacles too. I, I, it, it is always interesting to me what order, when it doesn't really matter, what order you and I go after things. Yeah. Eh. Our plans of attack are different, but that's okay. Yeah, but this, this uh, making sure everything is covered. Mm-hmm. Um, the the tentacles are surprisingly easy to miss a curve. Oh yeah. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Then <sighs> scratch your chin, kitty, 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 kitty. And by scratch your chin, I mean make sure that it is covered in paint. paint. Yep. But yeah, probably moving to the detail brush makes a lot of sense around around yeah. the mouth. Yeah, that's just it because I want a line around the mouth and the ears. But for the rest, I am going to. Use the bigger brush. And trying to get... The other thing that people often forget about Displacer Beasts, because everyone is like, oh, it's a panther with lots of, uh, with lots of tentacles. They That's have six legs. legs. <laughs> they, they have multiple legs. People forget that. And so now there are... It's the elbow-knee problem with the mm -hmm. legs. We've There's... been painting some leggy yeah. creatures lately. 
Well, and this is the first, I think this is the first medium sized creature. So a small mini that mm -hmm. we've done in a while. And so getting under the body to get at the back of these legs that are not they're not hidden enough that I'm like, ah, no one's going to see that if it's right. the, the three feet away rule. I'm like, right. I can clearly see this. Yeah, I can see there's a big old gap. Yeah. That's that's becoming an interesting exercise okay. for sure. I have to go out from under camera because angles and reaching, as we were talking about it, I definitely cannot do with the camera right there. <laughs> oh, that's that's fine. That'll give me a chance to get in the inside of this leg, and then I'll take a look for more <laughs> questions from chat. Sorry, chat, we are not ignoring you. There is just... Oh, a lot going on in this tiny little mini. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And even though we have now done several minis that we have mm. finished in one day, there's still like this weird, oh, we're going to get this done in one day. I, I, I got to be on top of things. Yeah. Feel. I don't know. I don't know why. Like if we don't finish it today, it's, it's not the end of the world. Fine. Yeah, it's it's fine. We can do like the finishing touches next week. No yeah. Movie. It's just a mini. Oh, I've got a rogue hair. Come on. Oh, I'm going to have to pull that off. Or else rogue I'm... displacer beast. I'm like, isn't that what they do? <laughs> That's, I believe that from Bardic Inspiration, it's a displaced displacer. Aww. Uh, that is that is one of the more, the, oh yeah. That is one of the more popular songs from Bardic Inspiration. It, it's dark. It's sad. It's a sad, sad song. But it is it it's it's a really good song. A yeah. lot of a lot of the monster songs on Bardic Inspiration are um morose, but yes. you know, in that in that awesome hard Epic rock feeling. way. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Bardic Inspiration, don't forget you can buy them on some new platforms now. Yeah. You can what stream them yep. on Apple Music, on uh Spotify. Spotify. Um, soon other places, I think the, the Spotify and the Apple music are kind of the, the two big yeah. ones, um, to finally have those available for streaming. That was, Beautiful. that was a big deal. Uh, yeah. Jason did a lot of hard work to make mm -hmm. that happen. Which, thank you, Jason. Mm-hmm. So now not only can you stream Bardic Inspiration Volume 1 and 2 in the game, but you can also stream it on your phone or on your computer, and you don't have to be uh, yeah. tied down to your yeah. computer in order to listen to all those sad, sad Displacer Beast songs. The Displacer Beast adoption song. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Abigail the Cobalt is now quoting the songs, Displacer Beast Lost Without a Way. Oh. Uh, Alan Kill wants to know, are displacer beasts shiny? I think they're, I think they're matte because yeah. of the fact that they're, they do the, the, I've forgotten the thing that they do, the name of the thing that they do that makes it super Teleport? hard for you to hit them. Or, oh, disruption. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, they, they have, um. I did not have a chance to check the stat block today like I normally do when we paint creatures. You know what? If only I had some access to like D and D Beyond. Oh, yeah. This placer beast, beast, because I am, I'm forgetting what the name of that power is. It hey, oh. it's called displacement. Okay, so it is displacement. <laughs> the displacer beast projects a magical illusion that makes it appear to be standing near its actual location. This is mirror image is the spell I was thinking of. Oh, uh, causing yeah. attack rolls against it to have disadvantage. If it's hit by attack, the trait is disrupted until the end of the next turn. The trait is also disrupted while the displacer beast is incapacitated or has a speed of zero, which kind of makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. You, you kind of have to be focusing on displacing if, uh, if you want it to happen. And if you're yeah. incapacitated, there's not much you can do. No. Definitely not. Um, no, but if you think it's shiny because of the black paint going on, it's because it's wet paint. Mm. <laughs> That's why it's shiny. Uh, and you can also go for um, a matte seal coat on it. Yeah, and that's... <laughs> Tabletop RP Gibbs just jumped in with Kitty! Yes, <laughs> yes it's Kitty time. The, the most, one of the most deadly of kitties, unless you are looking uh -huh. up uh, the Displacer Beast Kitten. Which is a completely different thing and ador yeah. and just as adorable and a little less deadly. Yes. Star. The star, the displacer star. beast kitty. Gosh, I love that storyline. It's so damn adorable. 
Also, I, I totally forgot until just now, not only do displacer beasts have more than four legs, um, their feet are, I guess, polydactyl, you would say? Yeah. They're They've got that. Feet. They got little yeah. thumbsies. They got thumbs on their feet. Yeah. Thumb the thumb thumbs. Be easier to grab you, I guess. Probably. Get some good grip in. Yeah. All right, I'm getting close to where I'm going to have to switch over to a, a detail brush because... I am not quite there yet because I'm still getting these tentacles. Yeah, the roundness of the tentacles are a challenge to try to get around for sure. Mm -hmm. That's where I was noticing that I have a stray hair on my brush because <laughs> I was painting and I just saw it sticking up and I'm like, oh, I can't turn this brush over. I'm going to just gently brush some black on my face. That's not oh, going to be good. Yeah. Let's not do that. All right. I, I, I think I am at uh, detail brush time. There you go. I think I'm, I'm, I probably don't absolutely have to, but I'm going to be extra cautious about this. <laughs> that is fair. Okay. Camera and cords and tentacles. My eyes are getting confused. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm that like, is the tagline of the show. It? Cameras and cords and tentacles. Oh my. Yeah, right. Mm. All right. Also trying to make sure I get all the black off of this brush before I oh, yeah, definitely. put it down is is a challenge in and of itself. But there we go. Really want to mute your next color. <laughs> all right, face, here we go. It's, it's definitely an interesting look at this moment to have this bright white head and a black everything else. <laughs> Right? <laughs> it's like it's peeking out to say hello. Oh, oh, hi. Uh, the evil version of Helen. Yeah. Hello. Ooh, hi. Hello, my darlings. How are you? How do you taste today? Let's find out. Bow to my will. <laughs> do as you see fit, but I am watching you. Always watching you. <laughs> Now it's just turning into Monsters, Inc. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I'm okay with this. <sighs> the other thing that always happens whenever I paint any of these minis mm -hmm. is I discover pieces of anatomy that should be obvious oh, yeah. that I just didn't think about until this very moment. Like, the back of these ears, trying to carefully paint the back of the ears. They're also very bat-like ears. <gasps> yes. Which is actually kind of cool. I like that. Yeah. But but trying to get at the back of the ears is definitely a challenge. Now I'm extra glad that I moved to the detail brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm almost done with the second tentacle. Oh, golly. I'm just trying to be really careful around what we already painted on the ears. Mm -hmm. And that's why back of ears are such a weird problem to have. Come on, come on, get there. behind your ears. Uh, Did you paint behind your ears? All right, I've officially, nope, nope, I'm not turning it over. That, I can't, that's not gonna make it easier. I, I was like, I'm about to officially turn this upside down and it's actually not gonna be any easier. Oh no. <laughs> Never mind. We're gonna keep you upright. Just, We're just kidding. Gonna do a lot of snoot boop in here to make this work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's some stippling action you have to do in a couple areas for sure. Mm. But I can see why doing the inside of the mouth and the inside of the ears first makes a lot of sense, especially mm -hmm. since we're just going for straight black right now. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I keep hitting the camera because my brush and the angle of the tentacles keep interlocking with each other. It happens. Intersecting, that's what I want, not interlocking. Intersecting. Uh, uh, uh. I am going to poke at you until you are black. You know, I was wondering how long it was going to take before we, 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 did the, we did the I want to paint it black joke. I'm kind of impressed that it took 30 minutes to get yeah. there. And gray shaped, I do use a wet palette. I'm just being lazy today because I have another mini project that my palette is being used for right now. And I didn't want to risk the mixes that I have going for that one. 
So I'm paper plating it. But honestly, uh, my big thing is making sure that you keep painting accessible for everyone. Not everyone can afford a wet palette. Not everyone is ready to jump into a wet palette. So paper plates are still perfectly fine to use and I highly recommend them. And then you get some cool abstract art when you're done. Oh yeah. And frankly, that, that doesn't sound lazy to me. If you are using that wet palette for something else, yeah. like that sounds efficient. You, you definitely, you don't want to go through all the trouble of mm. using your wet palette on whatever that, um, whatever you are working on and then mix it up with displacer beast stuff. Yeah. And it's also like, it's this mini that I've wanted to paint for the past two years and it's something I know is going to be a longer project. So I really don't want to compromise the blending and the mixing that I've been doing for that one. No, that totally makes sense. So. That gets, that gets precedent over Displacer Beast. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's and, why paper plates are awesome. Yeah. And a wet palette is basically, it is a flat rectangular container that holds a wet to moist, I know that word, cringe, uh, sponge. That's the word I'm looking for. And you put basically parchment paper on top of it and you put the paint on top of the parchment paper. And what happens is, is it keeps the paint wet for a longer period of time to the point you can actually put the lid on top of the wet palette and you can preserve the paint and it'll keep it that way for a little bit longer. Now, I, when they first came out, was not a fan of wet palettes. They did not work well for me mm. until I got the Redgrass Games wet palette and I liked how that one works. Um, so it's one of those things where just because you're hearing that, oh, you have to use wet palette, try it out. There are a lot of great DIY how to's on YouTube to make your own wet palettes. Try a DIY out and see if you even like using a wet palette. You may not like using a wet palette and that's perfectly okay because you can still do miniature painting without a wet palette. I, I mean, here sure we are right clear. now. Exactly. I want to make sure that's clear because I don't ever want it to become a sort of, um, no, not sort of as a, as a gatekeeping situation where people think they can't do something because they don't have X, Y, or Z. Yeah. And that's not the case. Is nope, it nice? That's... Sure. Absolutely. It's always great to have fun and different accessories for mini painting. But as long as you have your brushes and your paints, your water, a place to put your paints, dry brushes, or not dry brushes, uh, paper towels for dry brushing, and things like that, you can still be an effective mini painter without all of the... Um, Flash boom bang stuff, quite frankly. <laughs> With all the, the fancy schmancy. Yeah. So we actually haven't talked about your wet palette in a while. Mm. And and you talked about, you said, well, you know, I didn't like them for a while. And then yeah. the, the one that you have now, you enjoyed. What was it? Was it just, it actually worked to keep the paints it wet? Does, or yeah. It kept the paints wet for me. Um, it also seems to hold up better. And I have the Red Grass Games one, for those of you wondering for brand. Um, it kept the paints, uh, in a wet state longer and better. And the pad didn't dry out as quickly as others were. And I wasn't finding that there were mold issues happening between paint sessions. Ooh, uh, I didn't yeah. even think about mold, yep. but that totally yep. makes sense. Yep. Um, like there were times I'd open up the wet palette and like, I'd have to take a few days off because, you know, life is busy and I'm very sensitive to this moldy smell, mildewy smell. And no, it was not mm. fun. Um, so yeah, it, it took me a few years to get into even using one, but the red grass games one, won me over. I have really enjoyed using it, but All there right. are days I just will absolutely skip it and use a paper plate instead because I just, I know it's going to be a one paint session, so I don't bother. Yeah. One and done kind of thing. Yeah. And I like that something so simple, something you can go to the dollar store and pick up yeah. is so effective and and so much of this is super effective the um i will get ready to drink because i'm gonna say it <laughs> you, you, you come you, to our discord discord.gg slash idle champions hydration if you come to the discord sorry i also got paint on my nose i don't know how oh, it happened dear. Uh, uh, if you come to the discord we have a paint and slay channel where we list off uh all of the stuff you need in order to join us. And I pretty much use exactly that list. Um, I do have a, a couple, I've got an, a slightly nicer dry brush at this point, and I do have some of the washes. All the washes are, are also optional, um, but everything that you need is listed. And it literally is, here's a set of paints, here's a set of brushes, and that will work for you for dozens of minis. I yeah. mean, 
we've we've now done 29 episodes worth of minis and i have not had to buy paint yet yeah. just despite the fact that i've learned that i need to just be more liberal with my paint mm -hmm. um and then the rest of it is you know, and then it's the mini which varies in range and then the rest of it is you know paper plates and paper club cups and water and yeah. paper towels and you know incredibly easy things to pick up and uh, cheap to have so uh, that is all the stuff that I use, and I I feel like a very effective mini painter. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it keeps it accessible, which is yeah. my big thing. I like it so people feel like they can approach it and do it in the first place. Exactly. Right. Okay, so I am finalmente. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a a last look around for for yeah. places that are not shiny so because of the doing. light. They're shiny because I missed a spot. Mm. That happens. Um, so what I want to do is make sure that this black is dry. So we're actually going to paint the base and we're going to take, um, I have a little bit of this dark or not the dark. I have a little bit of the black left. So I'm going to mix some dark green in with it to make a darker green. Okay. And we're going to paint the base a dark, dark green. Dark dark green with black to make a darker green a for darker the darker green. yeah oh i don't have as much black as i thought i did that oops that looks like it was just about enough <laughs> you you guessed well i did holy uh, moly gray l beast or gray l shaped says all kittens are displacer beast let's just acknowledge that and martin agrees that is so incredibly true i also agree with that Mm. um some some displacer beasts some dragons yeah I, I have a couple of cats who are more dragon than they are displacer beasts <laughs> yeah. and then so so martin was really good about grabbing these questions v I, I think you probably saw them in chat because we just talked a bunch about wet mm. palace but grail shaped did specifically ask what are the pros and cons of a wet palette versus a, a paper plate and um alan kill did just flat out ask what a wet palette was um was yeah. there anything else related to any of that you wanted to talk about with wet palettes um, since i'm pretty sure you covered most of those covered, questions uh, like yeah i think i pretty much covered a good amount of it um you can diy it you can buy specific brands if you want to uh, if you're unsure if you want to even try and use one that's where i recommend diy first and okay so now hmm? that is my question yeah how obviously you had said you know go look at some youtube videos and stuff but it, like the tldr how do you DIY do it yourself wet palette? What does that involve? It's basically just getting a rectangular container um, and then a kitchen sponge, moistening the kitchen sponge and putting it into the container itself and then taking just cooking parchment paper, cutting it to size and placing it on top of the damp sponge and making sure the container has a airtight lid and closing it up when you can or when you're not using it is basically how you would do it. Interesting. All yeah, right. That's that's a very TLDR to it, uh, FYI. The 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 um the DIY TLDR FYI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Speak all in letters. <laughs> there you go. But I like that. That that totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and that that could be a fun thing for like, hey, 90% of the time mm -hmm. I do not need a wet palette. But you know what? This 1% of the time, I'm going to yeah. give it a I'm going to give the DIY a try just to see see what the fun is like and yeah. you know what? If 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 it doesn't work and this mini ends up being, you know, two different tones, oh well. <laughs> like that is the other thing to keep in mind is once again, like the the worst case scenario here is like you have to remix some paints and maybe you don't get it exact, yeah. but it's just paint. It's, it's also, just yeah, it's also how into the hobby do you want to get with something? If you want to be more of a casual recreational painter, you could have fun playing around with a wet palette, but again, it's not exactly necessary. Uh, if you know you're going to be painting religiously every single week, that type of thing, or you have a prolonged project that's going to take more than a day, mm. a few hours, then they are helpful to have around especially if you've been doing a lot of mixing, like, like I was talking about with the mini that I'm working on right now. And you can definitely, with some of those bigger projects, I'd imagine uh, if you don't want to use a wet palette or you don't have one, but you still want to do the bigger mini, mm -hmm. just taking that extra time to plan out a bit more of, yeah. you know, 
all right, this day, I'm going to make sure that the the last thing that I'm doing in my paint session does not involve, yeah. or anything that I'm doing doesn't involve any mixing, so that way I don't have to worry about saving yeah. onto any paint. You can also, if you want to do it that way, you can keep more um, <laughs> stringent notes of uh, paint mix colors, um, basically like a diary of what you did portion-wise and everything like that. To a paint the diary. Yep. You can do that. I've done that in the past where it's like, okay, so many drops to so many drops. I have literally sat there to do that. That makes sense. Yeah. Usually painting bases are a lot easier than this, oh, this because there's only one. two to four legs, but this is like oh, yeah. six legs. Why, why you gotta be legs? Yep. It's why got legs, legs. And then trying to get in between those, that polydactyl paw proving to be interesting. I have really got to get rid of this stray. St it's not going to show up on camera. I just hold up my brush like you're going to be able to see it. it. It's it's one big uh one big hair sticking out of my brush in Ugh. in just the wrong angle that like as I am very carefully painting around these feet, I'm mm -hmm. afraid that it's going to brush up against the feet like it's at that right. angle. Right. I might have to take a second and go get scissors because That's okay. Should I am I am annoyed. If it is, yeah, I was going to say, I was just going to say, if it is stressing you out enough, I would just snip it. Snip yeah. It by. Or if you're really lazy like me, just, you know, bite it with your teeth. <laughs> I did try to pull it. I did try to give it a, a pull because oh, I didn't care yeah. if I got any any paint on me. But I, yeah. this is one of the, the larger brushes. It's mm -hmm. not like it's huge, but like these are not small hairs and I just didn't have the ability to grab it with all the paint on it and make it make it pop so i think i think it's gonna be scissors time but i think i'm gonna finish the base first and then uh and then i will jump on over and grab my pair of scissors uh when i've cleaned off the brush yes that's why because it feels like that's probably an easier way mm -hmm. to do that yeah absolutely um the other thing is with paint bristles is mm -hmm. the way they're made um you don't want to pull on them because you might actually risk the integrity of the rest of the bristles. So it's oh. always better to trim your brush bristles. That is good to know. Yeah. Um, again, if you go to YouTube, you can actually see how paint brushes are made and it's utterly fascinating. Interesting. Mm hmm. Like, especially the sable based ones. Um, the way they have to line up the hairs and the type of hairs, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, it's it's like a whole trade in terms of like their apprentices and then apprentices. Oh, nice. And all of that. So it was, it was a wonderful video that I watched. I could not tell you what channel it was. It was one of those things where YouTube's like, hey, I think I might know something you'd like to watch. I said, try me, YouTube. And it was right. <laughs> <laughs> the algorithm was correct. Yep. So I wasn't actively seeking it out. Um, it was also one of those things I was not logged into in an account. It was just like, yeah, sure, I'll see what this is about. So I can't uh, go into my, I go into my history, your history. And, yeah, but it's not there. It's see, it is actually, there. it is very rare that I watch any, I, I watch a ton of stuff on YouTube and it is rare for me to watch without actually being logged in mm. because uh, Luke and I splurged a while ago on YouTube Red. There you go. Um, and we did it mostly for him because he really, he really enjoys, um, having music on while he is working yeah. and being able to have the music player on without, especially on his phone, without having the phone screen on mm -hmm. a surprisingly useful thing for him. And then it became a really useful thing because as you can imagine, as part of my job, I'm on YouTube a lot, like looking at our, our YouTube right. shows, you right. know, any of the streams that get put over there. And so being able to pull up a video and not have to sit through an ad is really, really useful. So I, I go out of my way to not be watching YouTube without being logged in. I think, I think, I think, therefore I've painted. Mm-hmm. All right, I think that's covered. I'm gonna I'm gonna wash this. Hi, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna wash this brush. Helen, Helen, hang out with me for a second, and I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna get rid of this hair. Okay. I'll be I'll be right back. <laughs> oh my god.
gosh, I love it. Yeah, Helen is Helen has just turned into our little mascot. And I'm here for it. Scissors! Scissors! It does help to keep a little sharp pair of scissors at all times, too. I will say that. I had to go grab my tiny scissors. Teeny tiny, teensy weensy. Oh, they're they're on the smallish side. Yeah. They're not the, the big ones. All right, come here. Yeah. You. So Peace. now that this is all black, what we're going to do is we're going to go in with darker tones to bring out this detail, which you can kind of see when I move it around the light every so often. You can see there's musculature. It'd be fun to bring out that musculature a little bit more because as you can tell, now that it is all black, it's a lot harder to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... Spinning, spinning. We're going to take black, ultra okay. rain blue, and okay. bloody red. And we want to make like a dark denim. Actually, forget the, not the bloody red yet. That is something else. Um, no, Just the blue and no, black? no, 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 we are doing the bloody red. Sorry, I was looking at, okay. I was looking at numbers. Wrong number. So we're going to okay. do the black, the ultramarine blue, and the bloody red. And what are our proportions for all that? I am going to need to play around with that one. Okay. So I'm going to start off with equal of the blue and the black, and then about half worth of the red. All right. Because I want like a deep purpley color. And yeah, my red this... is blowing bubbles. Yeah, my, my red is giving me problems. It I had to poke it to get it to work, and then now yeah. it's the cap is all... Ugh. I, right. I need to sit down again and do like a plug removal and just clean the tips of the bottles again. I have not done that like I should after we're done painting because I always jump into wrap up. <laughs> jump into doing something else, which yep. you know, that is that is fair. That's what happens with me when I'm, when we get to the end of one of these paints and it's like, okay, I'm going to let this fully dry. And then in like mm -hmm. an hour or two, I'm going to come back and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to do the, uh, yeah. The, the putting on the either putting on the base and or putting on the um the mod podge there mm -hmm. we go jeez words the thing uh and, and what ends up happening is that they often just sit on the windowsill drying for like four hours and i totally forget yep it's a thing that happens for sure okay i'm right. putting in a little bit more black okay I want this to be like a really a darker tone. Oh, hi, Rathmore TV. Welcome. Yes, mini painting is fun. We're having a, yes. a relaxing Friday painting a displacer beast. I'm trying to I'm I'm giving the, the call as close of a look as possible because I'm, I'm Yeah, I'll do a comparing. swatch. Oh, you're gonna just do just a section and just a second I'll give you a swatch of what I've done. And you know what? Just just watching you put in more black into what you got on the plate, I'm gonna need more black too. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah, the ultramarine actually uh, took over far more than I anticipated. Far more than anticipated. Mm -hmm. oh, there we go. <laughs> Evil Turnip Tea says, add some googly eyes. That makes everything kid friendly. You know, if they made tiny, tiny googly eyes, I'd be, I'd be totally here for it. There we go. I'd be totally here for the, the tiny googly eyed displacer beast. There's your swatch. And let's see here. Oh, question. Why put Mod Podge? Not Mod Podge as in the stuff you use for decoupage and such. It's actually called Mod Podge Ultra. It is a lovely liquid form that you can use on your miniatures to seal them up and to do different coats of sort of matte and gloss and that type of thing. Um, so no, we're not talking about like the paste thick light stuff. The Mod Podge Ultra seals your miniature. Uh, it adds effect to details if you want something really shiny or more mattified and it protects your paint after you are done. I just was failing miserably at words. <laughs> oh, words were a problem. Okay, oh, I think I've got something pretty close. Okay, to what you got. Cool. I've got a mini. Yep, we've got the minis. Okay, and now we're gonna take a dry brush, and we're okay. going to dry brush this slightly more heavier handed than like a light dry brush. We want to do more of an overbrush, which means okay. adding a touch more color. So I'm going to do the same thing, dip the brush in, remove the excess, bloop, 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 bloop. And then I'm going to go in. And this is the joys of when you're trying to stream painting a black miniature. <laughs> yeah, this is, that's a good point. This is one of those other yeah. reasons why we, we uh, don't often do all black or all white creatures because so you can cameras. see. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I definitely can see this is, 
So you want that shift in color so that the black stays in the recess details, but this purple tone starts hitting the more prominent ones. And this is the entire Displacer Beast? All of the black area. Yep, so the entire okay. Displacer Beast. Awesome. And I am keeping in mind the shapes and the directions of the musculature because you don't want to pull your your dry brushing technique in the same direction as the recess pieces because that not, oh my gosh. <laughs> now I want recess pieces. Um, the recessed areas, because then if you do that, you're going to pull the paint in the same direction as that layer and you want to have it go across the details, not along the details. Yeah, and on the legs, that's not too difficult, but definitely yeah. once it gets into the abs. It gets a little tricky. Yeah. Oh, and the feetsies. Too. Now I'm not going to do the tentacles themselves. I will edge around the tentacles because the tentacles are going to get a different color. Or oh, not the tentacles, okay. the, um, sorry, the feelers on the tentacles. Clarification. Oh, so just the, the, the ND bristly yeah. bits? Yeah. Okay. Those are going to get a different color. So I'm actually just the edge right here. See? I'm just going to do a little bit of that there. But then also, yes, the rest of the tentacle, just kind of mm -hmm. a, a yep. light yep. coat, it looks it like. It awesome. Sweep. Yep. Don't forget the that is That is definitely, uh, I'm liking how this is looking with like the blue overcast on it. Yeah. That, is, that is pretty cool. Yeah, it makes a big difference and it's kind of a neat way to bring out more details. <laughs> I'm not reading that one out loud, but Rathmore, I saw that. Well then, okay. <laughs> uh we're, we're keeping we're keeping we're the chat pg-13 yes i like it although displacer beasts are are pretty fearsome and they're one of those creatures in where i was actually just talking last night to some friends about this about how you can actually make D, &D streams relatively family friendly you know, if if you keep it as kind of a high adventure type show and more about, you know, having fun being heroes yeah. and you just keep the uh, your language clean. Right. Most of a D&D &D show you can actually have to be very family friendly. The hard part actually comes in during the battles, because when you are battling creatures, I think a lot of us as D&D &D players, but even, you know, even just if you get into the fighting, mm -hmm. describing how the battle is going, right. it can get really hard to not all of a sudden think about, oh, that's actually a little gorier than I expected, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the part where it actually becomes a bit of a challenge is how do you, uh, how do you describe epic battles without it getting a little too gory so that it, it becomes, you know, that visual, that... Um, that audio representation of the uh, the gory battle in a movie. Yeah, yeah. It's tricky and, uh, yeah. you know, it's one of those things and to the, be conscientious about. And the extra funny thing mm -hmm. is I have uh, uh, watched many streams that are family friendly that have included like teenagers playing along and mm -hmm. having fun. And oh, you know okay. what? the the teenagers also kind of want to describe their battles in gory yeah, detail they do and so sometimes the kids are into it yep <laughs> so it is and displacer beasts are one of those creatures that come with an element of horror yeah. because of how scary they can be and so they are another one of those creatures that can be kind of hard to run if you're trying to avoid um yeah. It's spooky, scary horror just because of right. the way they hunt. Right. But they're super fun otherwise. Well, they are. All right, getting on the inside of this creature is it's do what you to can. be. Don't make yourself bonkers over it though. <laughs> I will do my best. But I really, really like how this blue is casting over the body mm -hmm. to to give it that shimmer. And I, so I really want to try. All right, That's Tentacle, fair. you're going to have to move out of the way. That is fair. So I can get at the butt. It's all about the butt. And I'm going to just yes. very lightly dry brush across the face and the head. Uh, Legendary Dragon 75 asks, Lauren, doesn't that depend on the age of the kid's teen person? Absolutely. 100%. 
you know, what you feel comfortable and for, and also, you know, it's also a hundred percent a parent thing. What one parent thinks is appropriate for their kids is completely oh, different gosh, than another, yeah. you know, for those of us who might be thinking about being on a stream that is quote unquote family friendly, a lot of it is just coming up with the, those discussions ahead of time. You know, when we talk about family friendly, we mean this, that, or the other thing. And we're going to kind of keep that in mind. You know, are we going for like a PG 13 rating in which case family friendly for teens? Yeah. Uh, are we thinking of something that is okay, this is good for all ages. And so, you know, there's, there's a G rating. And so now we need to be extra cautious about a bunch of stuff. So yeah, yeah there's a whole, when I say family friendly, uh, that is a very general term and absolutely being more specific um, for the shows. And even then for one family that may be perfectly fine and right. awesome. And for another family, eh, no, we're going to wait a little bit longer. Yeah. And, and I also, disclaimer, have no children. And so I can only speak to a certain extent on that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, with my kiddos, it was going off of their cues and what their comfort levels were when they started getting more detailed and descriptive yeah. with their attacks. That's what you could tell. It was like, okay, you can amp this up a little bit more now. It's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> One of them took great glee one time describing how they split a monster in two and the guts came pouring out type of description. You're just like, okay, <laughs> we're there. And that can be another thing about, uh, about younger kids, mm -hmm. not necessarily teens, but younger kids, uh, sometimes getting into, they want to get into the gross out part of a, you know, it's not violent. It's no. gross and icky. You know, and there's there's definitely there's, a, a different line yeah. there. Yeah. So there is that. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to make a more of a dark denim blue. So it's just going to be the ultramarine blue and black mixed together. I'm going to aim yeah, for think, equal parts. I think I'm almost there. I'm, I'm doing the looksy around, the mm -hmm. final looksy around to see what mm -hmm. I missed. Yeah. Okay. So you said equal parts black yeah. and blue? Yeah, equal parts black and blue, aiming for a dark denim tone, which I will swatch in just a minute. Yeah, equal parts did what I hoped it would do. Nice. Nice. Right, I gotta do that, I gotta do that, and then equal parts of black and blue. So there you go, that's your little paint swatch there. Okay, so definitely brighter than yeah, slightly brighter. what we just had. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you'd, Evil Turn Up T says, uh, turns out there are quite a lot of games aimed for kids, though, or RPGs that are more story focused rather than combat mm -hmm. focused. And that 100%. Uh, yes. I'm mostly just talking about D&D &D in specific, just because that, that I feel partially comfortable talking about. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it is, there's a ton of amazing uh oh, yeah. rpg systems out there that are specifically geared towards kids yeah there's um, um oh god i have a couple and why am i blanking on the names now mice and Mystics. honey heist honey heist is really good okay. honey heist you can yeah. do all sorts of fun things i'm sorry what were you saying about mice, and, mice Mystics? and mystics that's another cute it's like board game miniature game combined type of thing um adventure setting so that one was a cute one to do with them uh, so i'm going to do the same thing but i'm going to be a little less heavy-handed this one I'm going to, you know, true dry brushing, float it over the miniature as opposed to looking for more coverage. Right. And just lightly do this across, again, the whole body. And you'll find it just brings out the details just a little bit more. There we go. I had to do, I had to add a little bit more blue into mine to get it a true denim. Mm. Gray L Shape says, we have opted for board games like Wingspan, El Dorado, and Scrabble for competition, and then co-op games like Forbidden Island. I've heard really good things about Forbidden Island. Cool. Very, very cool. And once again, you are doing this across the whole, the whole body? Thing. Yep, the whole thing. Okay. Hmm. But not looking for as deep of a coverage as I did before. So it's actually lighter. And my sticky tack, I think I'm going to have to... A uh, little little side note, folks, if you're using sticky tack, you may find at some point the sticky tack you've been using suddenly is just going, nope, I'm going to mm -hmm. replace it. And mine is starting to do that. So I'm going to have to remember to toss this when I am done today. Yeah. 
but that's another thing that yeah. is oh yeah it's relatively beautiful. inexpensive for how much you can get so yeah i still have a slew left after three bucks of spending it <laughs> three years ago probably Oh, look at those abs. Mm -hmm. Look at that muscle definition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mostly. Okay. Tentacle. I mean, if if you're going to have a kitty that works out, right? You, you might as well show it off. Can you imagine leg day? Holy moly. <laughs> leg and leg and leg and leg and leg day. Leg, 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 leg. <laughs> All the All legs. All the leg day. All the leggy day. Hey, it works for them. Mm-hmm. Now, is this because we're doing kind of a more um, actual dry brushing? Are we doing anything on the tentacles? I'm going over them quickly. I'm not being as heavy handed. Just kind of catching it here and there. Okay. Nothing too extreme. I also keep forgetting that this tail is a tail and not a tentacle. I'm just, right? I just have been including it in on, you know, and tentacles. And then I get to the end of it. I'm like, oh, uh, nope. Tail. That's, that's just a tail. That's just that, the tail. Let me tell you the tail something. end. Let me tell eh. you something. Eh. It's pun-tastic. Yada. Okay. And I'm going to call it for that, for the displacer beast, but you can see. It's still dark in tone, but you actually have definition happening now, as opposed to all black. Yeah, I'm just finishing up on the face. Yep, totally fair. Definitely helps with those eyes for sure. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm going to let this, uh, we're going to go, speaking of base, we're going to go back to the base. But for now I want the displacer piece itself. Mm. I need more paper towels. <laughs> Next. Next. Another thing, another thing I've learned about myself is uh, have plenty of paper towels. Yes. I'm going to go right back to classic dark green, no mixing. Okay. Not even shaken or stern. Stirred. Oh. Just. <laughs> Except green. for, you know, the classic, I'm going to pick it up and automatically do well, this. Well, that, that, like shake it. But I mean, like. <laughs> Not mixing it with other things. Uh, <laughs> so then I'm going to dry brush this onto the base. Okay. Just to start bringing out some more details that are on the base. I'm kind of impressed with how far we've gotten in only an hour. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I guess I thought because we were going to be doing so much more of um layering of stuff that this was going to take a while but like already i'm really impressed with how this looks yeah some miniatures even though they look more complex you still get great results with just a little bit of work you know less is more does count for some minis in some cases yes and definitely this one yes, yes. um all right, we, we already got to Alan Kill's Mod Podge question. This is what I get for once again, looking over chat every once in a while, but not looking at what Martin, our wonderful moderator, has been doing in our backstage <laughs> chat. Um, uh, Ye old Dice Goblin wants to know, do they sell a Displacer Beast mini made of the clear plastic? <sighs> Off the top of my head, I don't think officially, yes. However, there are fantastic 3D printers out there who make these really cool-looking cat-like creatures that seem to have tentacles sticking out of their shoulders. And if you know someone who has a resin printer, you can actually get a clear resin print for that style of miniature. And that's Concept. definitely going to be, uh, that's an interesting paint job right there with a clear mm -hmm. mini. Mm -hmm. But I like that idea. Um, I'm trying to think, well, you know what? I don't have to think. I got the Displacer Beast up here right now. Besides displacement... I don't think it actually turns invisible, but I like the idea of like having having an effect because you're using the clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's just hard to see. Yeah, it's just every 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 bit is hard to see. Doopy, 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 doo. 
What's the point of a clear mini coming from Allen? Because you can use it for different effects. For spell effects, you can keep the plastic transparent and make it look really cool and flashy. Uh, yeah. You can also make it so that you have light playing up and through and underneath. It's great for things like fire and water effects. There is definitely use for clears in clear plastics in miniatures. If you want to see us uh, actively working on clear plastic, mm -hmm. check out the beholder that we did. The the um, the beholder that we made into the yeah. clown version of the Xanathar um, that has the spell effects on the a couple of the eye stalks yeah. that are clear plastic so that you can do all that sort of fun stuff with it. Yeah. Okay, I'm taking Beastie Brown and I'm adding it to what was left of my dark green just to create like an olive green. Like okay. A muddy green. And I'm going to do one last pass of uh, lighter dry brushing on the base for a rough ground cover look. Ah, oh, okay. Mud. Muddy, muddy. The other interesting thing about the minis that we've done recently, mm -hmm. a lot of them have had a, a large enough base yeah. that I haven't felt the need to super glue it onto the, the disc that they come with. Right. Because, once again, I'm not a player that usually plays, I play a lot of theater of the mind or online. So a lot of these minis are, are just for fun or just because I like painting and I like the show. Yeah. Uh, and so I haven't been putting a lot of them on their, their discs because they stand really well. And I'm looking at this mini and I'm like, that's probably going to be the same actually. Speaking like, th of that's a pretty which, chunky base. Uh, WizKids is switching over to the clear blade bases no clear bases now so this is the first one i've gotten that has the clear base to it um, ah. so reason for this is so that when you if you use grid you can pop it onto your table and you'll see your grid play through the bottom so you can tell exactly what you are doing for distancing etc um, but if you prefer the old black base look you can very easily paint that black and have your ability to kit bash your bases and make them look all cool if you like and by the way Heads up, folks, I just heard a fantastic rumble outside my window. Uh -oh. um, so I'm sorry uh -oh. for the thunderstorm. If we blip out, it means that in this case, I lost power this time. <laughs> yeah, for, for those of you who missed it, uh, last week we did that um, special for mm -hmm. the, the supercharged day of Modron streaming. And uh, I lost power in the last, last 10 five minutes. minutes. Oh, five minutes, let's say, yeah. It was, it was the last five to 10 minutes of the show. And fortunately, V is able to keep going. But yeah. um, V is the one who actually does the, per, the uh, is see. actually streaming this show uh, because that way we can get a really, really clear camera. camera view. Yeah, That's that's the reason. Uh, but yeah, so if yeah. that goes down, I apologize in advance. But hey, you know, real life happens. And, and we'll just pick up on the Displacer Beast next week. Yeah. Um, but hopefully you just get a really nice thunderstorm with. I mean, cool I can thunder. open the windows if people want to hear the thunderstorm. And we're really all right, chat. Do, do, we <laughs> do want, I open the window? Do we want to open the window, or are we afraid that that's going to just mean everyone's going to fall asleep? <laughs> just, ooh, thunderstorm time! Thunder, thunder, thunder cats! Oh! <laughs> Displacer beast! So. Oh. Oh. And All Alan, right. Alan, what is it? Alan Kill? I think what I was saying Alan Kit before. I think because I have cats in the brain. There are no such things as dumb questions. I am happy to answer whatever I possibly can for you. Absolutely. And that is that is not just for this show, but for all it's of our shows. General, we, yeah. if if you think you have a question that is you know a, a basic question, a beginner question, that kind of thing, chances are, because we've got several hundred people in this chat, chances mm -hmm. are there are half a dozen people, if to a dozen people who are just lurking and working and doing fun mm -hmm. stuff. Hi, lurkers. Nice to have you. Hi, and they're thinking the same question. So you going ahead and asking it is probably helping a ton of other yeah. people. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go back to my little detail brush. Okay. And I just put some sun yellow onto my palette and we're going to dot the eyes with sun yellow. Oh, okay. So tiny, 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 tiny bit. Tiny. We're getting into teeny, tiny time. Which means for those of you who are regulars, you know, we're going to get quiet for a second because it's the whole like holding the breath, concentrating, steepling my fingers, which is where I'm putting pressure points in to stable my hands a little bit more. Stabilize yeah. my hands a little bit more. Oh, I love how the chat is now all saying hi to the lurkers. Yes, hi lurkers. As, as someone who does a lot of lurking and working myself, mm -hmm. welcome. 
And now it's time for me to be quiet. Just a dot in the yellow in the eye? Yep, just a dot of oh. yellow in the eye. Okay, that's one. Right? And... And I'm trying to get to the other one, and the tentacles are in the way. How dare you, tentacles. Okay, all right. Ooh, ooh, I think, all right, I think I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put it down before I go, well... <laughs> I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera, but I I'm actually pretty. Yeah, it's not going to show up on my camera at all, but ooh, yeah, yours is looking great. Yay! It does not take much of a bright color against that. No, blue it skin. really doesn't. So, oh, that's and it's cool. really just, we're going to do that yellow for the eyes because they have those intense flashing eyes and that is it for the eyeballs. Now we're going to go to Stonewall Gray, which, oh, okay. did I say to grab uh, that one? Did I not grab uh, it for myself? No, I, okay. I see we a bone stone white. Wall. We need stone okay. wall gray. My apologies. I skipped over that one. How dare. That. How dare stone. That's silver. There's stone wall gray. That's that's why it's good to have the mm -hmm. the stuff nearby for that mm -hmm. that inspirational moment of oh but wait, I need this. Okay, stone wall gray. Big butt of boom. <laughs> oh, I didn't even hear that. Oh, I did. Okay. I think, I think my mic's doing a good job of um, dampening it down, but um, there have been thunderstorms where you'll actually hear the windows rattling. Oops. I've Ooh. done streams in the past where people are like, what was that? I'm like, oh, that's just the windows rattling. Don't worry. <laughs> that's just the house it's, shaking It's down. no big deal. Don't worry. I'm fine. Totally fine. So mm -hmm. we're going to take this and we're going to all those little tootsie footsies. We're going to do some stonewall gray on the clothes. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got this. I got this. I got this. Don't forget the dew claw. I totally forgot about the the claws altogether. So here we go. Yep, yep, yep. Just a little dab will do you, quite frankly. Yeah, because yeah, the same thing. The same thing with that yellow, and where as soon as you just put a dot or two on there, mm -hmm. it really shows up. Hold on. I need to move because I can't see with camera and everything. And there is a funky angle I need to get to. One moment, please. All right. Um, chat, we will give you a topic while we are all hardcore into footsies. <laughs> um, are we giving this creature a pedicure or a manicure? Go. Mm. Oh, God. Right. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's that middle foot. It's the middle foot that has given me Ajda yeah. here. Yeah. I also, where is the... Hold on. I know it's there. I can't see it, though. Huh? We're going to make it up and we're going to call it that one. That <laughs> may have been the poor choice. I don't think that was it. One moment. I need to remove that. Uh, you've just added an extra toe. That's okay. Yeah, except it's on the ground. <laughs> I mean... Eh, it, we're good. This is this is what happens when the displacer is doing the displacement is you think their feet are on the right? ground in a place that their feet aren't actually. It goes into hiding. I do want to come up with names for these two because um Helen oh, yeah. feeling is gonna have a pet out of this one. Uh, that is another excellent suggestion for uh chat is hey, what should we call these? Mm -hmm. What what names should we give our kitties? All right, that, I've got one more one more foot, one more foot. Here we go. Please. No, and I am not calling mine fleshy kitty. No, uh -oh. <laughs> nope. That's 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 a nope for me. Nope. All right. Well, the pedicure slash manicure on that back foot is uh, not amazing. Yeah, I had a similar issue. Hmm. I might mm -hmm. go back and fix it when things are dry. But holy heck, it's these are interesting angles. Yeah. That is not helping me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, I'm putting it down. I'm putting it down. What? Um, Dumb uh, Rathmore suggests for names Thunder and Lightning, which I think is immensely actually, appropriate. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, but we we've got some other good suggestions here before we before we settle on the first thing we see. Um, Little kittens suggests Mister Purr, which is adorable. Is uh, Yield sweet. Dice Goblin says Mittens. Which I also like, although now that I've just had to deal with the feet, 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 and feet. Uh -huh. Ugh. Ah. 
All right. I think, I think I've got them all and or I think this is the best I can do. You know, that is fair. I know I am way out from under camera, but I also I can't reach them with the camera mm -hmm. in my face. Yeah. I don't know how well this is going to show off. It'll get a little blurry as I'm going to get super close because because my face cam is like, that's not a face. That is, that is not a place where your face should be. Yeah. Huh. I also have some toes missing on my front paw. I'm just noticing. You know, the life of, of a displacer beast is really rough. Yeah, I'm actually missing like the front toes on that one. So I think I'm done by default. <laughs> I'm done because of previous encounters. Yep, exactly. I'm done because there's a story that this one has to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we have that. And now we want to do teeth. So we're going to take that bone white and right. carefully get the twofers. The twofers. All right. Whoa. Oh, tiny, tiny bit of bone excited. white. Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> Rathmore TV says, silly camera, it's a disfacer beast. Oh my goodness. All right. I would I would applaud that if my hands weren't full of uh, a tiny brush and a displacer beast. Fair. Yeah. Totally fair. Okay. And it's it's four fangs in the front, I see. It's a whole system right up there, yeah. So I am going to. Speaking of stray hairs again, I think that's a stray cat hair I had going. <laughs> How appropriate. Yep. So I'm going to just float this around the mouth. There you go. Yeah, I've got the the two front or the, the top like and the bottom yeah. front, but I'm not I'm having a harder time with like okay. the rest of the chompers. All the chomps. That is perfectly okay. Chomp chomp chomp. There we go. Oh, rawr. Rawr. Yeah, my, my, my teeth are a little... <laughs> this kitty hasn't been to the dentist in a while. They're a little... <laughs> a little but, crooked? A little bit, yeah. yeah. But it's not, it's not too bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go to... Using this bone white still. Yeah. But I'm going to go back to a dry brush. And I'm going to actually hold the tentacle carefully and take the bone white with a dry brush and do this. Ah. Yep. Okay, bone white, come here, come here, come here. Sort of a way to cheat it onto the tentacles, I guess you could say. Or the feelers on the tentacles, not the full tentacles themselves, just the feelers. Just the, the spiky bits on the end. The, yeah. the really, really dangerous bits. Danger kitty. Yeah. Danger kitty. I think I think the <laughs> description actually talks about uh Oh, no, it just says tentacles. Okay. I thought I thought the description I, yeah. actually said what the end of those tentacles are called, the 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 mouths, the mm -hmm. the hardcore stuff, but uh, my quick look, I did not see. I'll go back and look again That's in a fair. little bit, but I wanted to get this other tentacle done. I mean, admittedly, there are times where I'm painting something and I'll reach out to a friend of mine who is a writer and I'll be like, hey, what do your people call this? <laughs> <laughs> what do you call this? <laughs> you, the writers and creators of these things, what is this body part called? <laughs> That's that's where sometimes uh, social media is a good thing when you can just uh -huh. put stuff like that out into the world and be like, help, yep, yep. help. Like I want to call it the proper thing, but I don't know what to call it. Help. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Evil Turnip Tea says, I want a translucent clear gelatinous cube mini with a hatch so you can put the PC's mini inside when they get gulped. I think those things exist, right? It does. Yeah, WizKids has a gelatinous cube mini that you can actually take off and plunk on top of miniatures. No problem. That is awesome. Yep. And I actually have a tutorial on how to do it if you're interested. Or, you know, we could have some fun and do it ourselves here. I mean, why not both? Why not check out your tutorial? And then maybe maybe we'll also do that later. Yes. Hmm. I'm for it. I'm all for it. All right. Okay. So we're we getting have... into super fine details now, and I'm we excited. Are. We are getting into super fine details. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in. Going to go back in, darlings, with a detail brush. Okay. And I am, ouch, <laughs> I am ouch. I'm going to take some Stonewall Gray. And do you still have your uh, denim blue mix? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, oh, I still have some Stonewall Gray out too. So I'm going to take some Stonewall Gray, bring it to that denim -y blue and lighten that up just a scotch to make it more of a um, classic denim as opposed to a dark denim. All right. And I know I usually use food references, but quite frankly, when they're dealing with blues, a harder one to think of foods yeah unless you're going blueberries your denim yeah. is is a really a pretty accurate yeah a pretty accurate so, place to go just to swatch that's the color i'm going for okay all right and where are we putting this lovely blue you're gonna take this blue and basically highlight things like the top of the ears um, if there's some musculature, you really want to have pop right out. So, hold on. I bumped the camera. And now. <laughs> Stay I'm still, right. camera. No, it was totally my bad because I bumped it around. So I'm going to just take it and edge around that ear a little bit. Hmm. Just like a highlighting kind mm -hmm. of thing. Exactly. Awesome. The whole ear or just the top of the ear? I'm doing the whole ear. Okay. Like just the ridge of the ear, basically. And then I'm also going to do this over the brows. <laughs> I'm actually resting my nose on my camera cord because it's helping me stabilize. <laughs> hey, if it I works. Just realize that I'm like, yoink. Multi-purpose camera cord. Why not? Mm -hmm. Okay, ears and then the brow. Brows. Yep. The angriest of eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do the top of the nose. The, the, the angriest booping of snoot. Yes. Snoot a boop. Grumpy group. Uh, let's see here. So basically what I'm doing at this point is I'm just going around and I'm seeing what's catching my eye in the light and giving it a little bit more of a feature with the detail brush. Okay. So like I'm just going to kind of sort watch of like and the cheekbone area here. I'm going to get that little area right there. Hmm. Just a touch to bring that out more. Oh, darling, you just need a little bit more on your cheekbones. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, and I'm definitely going to do this around the edge of the right through here. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Which is surprisingly tricky with how wobbly these are. And this is this is the moment in where I think you and I are going to have different experiences with where our tentacles are and how difficult this is. Mm -hmm. Cause like I found it actually really easy to go in and do the, the uh, dry brushing on the, the feeler part. Uh -huh. Cause they just happen to be in a really good spot for that. But this is a little more difficult. I'm actually glad I just did that. Cause apparently I missed a whole dang spot on this one tentacle because of how it was positioned. <laughs> that happens. Beep, beep. I fixed it. Hooray. Yay. <laughs> That's also usually the moment I go, well, I'm glad I have a wash coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank the universe for washes. Yes. There is a wash for that. Mm-hmm. 
And I come here, other tentacle. And the more I think about it, the more I think Thunder and Lightning is, is an appropriate name for these yeah. two. You want Thunder or do you want Lightning? You're the one with the thunderstorm. You you pick which one you want. I'll go with I'll, I'll you know, and I was also joking about Thundercat, so I'll take Thunder. Okay. I will take lightning. There we go. Very, very frightening me. Displacer yeah. beast. <laughs> <All> <laughs> right. Meow meow meow. Meow 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 meow. I think this this denim blue that I'm using was uh slightly drier than I thought, but that's oh. okay. That's what water is for. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can thin it out if it's starting to dry up on you. A little bit. There's a couple times where I'm like, I got plenty on here. You know, I'm I'm trying to be really cautious, and then the next thing I know, I'm like, wait a Whoopsie. second. <laughs> Why is my brush Whoopsie. stuck to the top of this displacer oh, no. beast? Oh, ew. Not, ew. Yeah. That's not what you want. No, 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 no. Okay. And out of curiosity, what what else? So I've got the I'm edges of the, the muscles. tentacles. Kind of the higher points of the muscles, too. Oh, okay. On the legs. And also on the feet, you got those lovely little ridges over there. So this at this point, is this almost like dry brushing with a fine a fine it's, brush? It's deep it's not dry brushing, it's using your detail brush to create more precise lines. Whereas dry okay. brush has more of a fuzzy fade effect to it. Ooh. Okay. Hemingway has been having far too much fun on my desk lately. Uh-oh. Why? What happened? Got another cat here in my brush. I'm like, I just removed one of those. Yeah, I definitely need more water. This is dried out on me. But that's okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's I can fair. take another look at the chat. Ye old, ye old Dice Goblin has a title champions question, which yes. is awesome. awesome. Um, off topic. Well, title champions related, so that's yes. not off topic. I just had a weekend chest pop up in game when I went to look to see who all it's for. What the golden sweetener? I'm not seeing a bonus golden. Is this an error? Uh, I'm unsure because that just happened a little while ago, and I'm not sure when you put that into chat so I, I might be very behind um try the turn it off turn it back on again which i know is that you know everybody kind of rolls their eyes yeah, like, okay yes. fine but it honestly works um and if you're not seeing all of the stuff um definitely go ahead and uh, go and check out the discord because i'm not remembering exactly what the weekend stuff is at the moment so I I don't want to give you the wrong information. Oh, also, uh, Martin has gone off to lunch. So thank you, Martin. Thank you, and Martin. Mars has joined us Hello, as moderator for, for this funness. So hi, Mars. So Mars is going to join us for the second half of the show. Lovely. As we finish up our uh, Thunder and Lightning Displacer kiss Kittens. It's like Thunder Lightning. And I'll stop. And uh, Alan Kill says, are there painting instructions that come with these minis or do you just invent the colors yourselves? Uh, there are no painting uh, instructions. There, I mean, there are, but I create them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are no painting instructions that come with the minis. No. Um, they, they usually have the art on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, here's, here is the mini painted like the official art so that you have something to base it on. But as far as the instructions, that's 100% V. I did it. I did but that's that. also half the fun right now yeah. is learning from V how to go about and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the more you paint, the more tricks you pick up as to what'll work for you and your own style. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I am I am not sure where else to go after, and that usually means I need to stop. Yeah. If you're finding a point you're like, and I'm good. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of looking at some of the musculature and yeah. uh, either I was a little heavier than I should have been with that first round of of blue mm -hmm. or I'm just I'm just looking at it and going eh. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. 
I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Just totally give me an extra chance to clean off this. Cause my tiny, tiny little brush is actually hard to clean. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. It's just covered in blue, and I'm like, no, you can't. You can't stay blue. You cannot stay wow, blue. Sir. This is That's not going to be good. Honestly, where you can go in and you can take uh, rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to do it myself today, um, mm. and use it to strip the paint off your brushes. Just literally dip yeah. your brushes in. And it's don't use it on actual animal hair brush style bristles because it'll strip the oils you want in that hair. But for synthetics like these, yeah, totally yeah. go for it. Yeah, especially with the, my, I got a super, super, super fine yeah. brush here and yeah. it just it likes to hold on to paint colors i don't know why there are some brushes i was like nope it mine it absolutely mine you know can has oh hi little kittens and welcome uh thank you for uh the nice compliment we are it is super cool i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty proud of this so far sure i'm pretty be. proud of this like now now and i know we still have at least a worse yes we do. I'm at least a worshing, but I'm, I'm definitely at that point of I'm going to stop doing the detail stuff or else I'm just going to start painting lines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in a there. good way. I am almost there. I'm just getting those last little little bits that I want. So for those of you in chat, now is the perfect time. If you have any last minute questions about painting or mm -hmm. about Idol Champions, go ahead and put those in chat so Mars can grab those. Um, or stick around because in 30 minutes from now garwar's guide to everything is coming up and garwar is an excellent resource for all things idol champions yes. i am a pretty good resource for all things idol champions <laughs> i have a different skill set than garwar let me put it that way let me let me not be as self-effacing and be like he is just really good at a lot of yes. of in-depth knowledge if you have any specific questions about idol champions you can go ahead and ask me i'll do my best but garwar garwar's got a guide for that yeah all right i see you attacking a wash yeah i'm pulling out my agrax earth shade we're going to start with that and we're going to apply this i'm hoping it's dry enough Ag did oh. i grab act i grabbed a night night shade drink it oh that's right because we were going to do you have agrax right uh let's see did you spill the null Agrax I spilled, the yes. <laughs> For those of you playing the home game, I spilled the hardest um, uh, wash to get all over my desk because I'm good that way. But yes, I also, I do have Agrax Earthshade. Yeah. So let's Whoa. go for Agrax Earthshade. And we're going to put this onto the um, feelers of the tentacles, just on those. And then we'll also put it on into the mouth and onto the base. And for those that do not have a wash, what Just would you suggest take using? A dark brown paint and make a mix out of that. And using that. All right, so you said in the mouth and on the, the, the mouth, frills of the tentacles? On the little feeler, the little feeler thingies, yeah. Yeah, time to dirty up those teeth. They, yeah. they were they were pretty nasty teeth anyway, so let's just make them brown. No. <laughs> let's, just, let's just dirty them up, yeah. Just give a little bit of something. Grr. Arg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a deep cut right there. <laughs> uh, All right. Oh, there's yeah. a, I'm looking at chat right now. Question B, do you practice paint a mini before the stream to come up with your instructions? Um, I am at the point in my knowledge of paint that I can look at the miniature and apply my knowledge and basically build from the bottom up for what I want to do with the mini so I can kind of plot it out in my head. I'll probably sit and stare at a mini for longer than people realize what I'm doing. They think I'm zoned out, but I'm actually studying and analyzing. If I did this, then what would happen with that? Um, and then once I kind of get a good feel for how I would attack the miniature, not with, you know, battle, but paint, I will then start writing out my directions. And every so often I'll look at my directions and be like, mm, let me adjust that slightly. But yeah, I kind of, um, I'm at the point where I can look and start to create from there as opposed to, um, having to paint the mini first. That used to be a while back. I would have to paint a miniature and take notes how I painted it and then hmm. go back and make notes if I changed it. But now I'm at the point where I'm secure enough to just, uh, Start off the fly and, you know, plan ahead of time in the noggin. In the noggins. Mm -hmm. 
And some of these you have done before. So oh, you, yeah. you've already had yeah, experience. Somewhere. Absolutely. But yeah. I haven't done a display series before. Oh, nice. Yep. And if if I am looking right, you're putting some of that earth shade on, on, the, the, base. on the base. Yep. Awesome. You guys are all about that base. About that base. And this will be that point in where if I've missed any of the green on the base, I'll be like, and now it's wash time. Yay. Ooh. All the wash. Help me wash. You're my only hope. <laughs> it definitely helps pop out those details. And this this base is surprisingly chunky on lot, details. Yeah. It has a lot of nooks and crannies on it, which is nice. I wonder if that was an intentional thing because there's so much of this creature that is smooth because of the tentacles in the back. Um, or if it's just whoever made the mold for this base just decided yeah. to have all of the details. I don't know. I think I would have to talk to Randy about that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I got the base. Ah. Close. Close you. Garwar is asking if I think it would be possible to kit bash a treasure chest mini to look like one of the in-game Idol Champions themed chests. Oh, that's a good question. Could be fun. It could be fun. It would definitely depend chest. on which, which chest. Because yeah. uh, especially some of the weekend chests, gorgeous yeah. in-game, might be a little more difficult. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's kind of a cool idea. Okay. Are we letting this kind of sit yeah, for gonna, a second? Gonna before... give, it a, give it a little bit of time to dry before we move on to. We're going to do the Drakenhof Nightshade on the Displacer Beast itself. Okay. And for those that don't have that wash... What that would they be? would just be uh, probably mix a dark denim again and thin that out very, very thin. So it's almost broth like, like a nice mm. good bone broth. And that would be your wash. So take take what this color is and thin it out. Lots and lots and lots and lots yeah. of water. Yep, 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 yep. Clean, Which clean, is what clean, I will be doing for the Nuln oil because yes. it's all over my desk. Do, do, do. <laughs> The good thing is I, I took precautions before it happened and I have, you can't see it, but my desk is covered in paper towels because you, you know, it's my desk. Yeah. And so fortunately it didn't actually get all, all over my desk. It got right. all, all over a bunch of paper towels. <laughs> exactly. So while we're waiting for this to dry, uh, I'm going to mention that we have a two parter coming up for us, which yes. is the hell I don't have it near me. Dang it. I cleaned my desk. This is what I get. For oh, my desk. mine's in that. Cause it's the surprisingly hell... large. So I put it in the closet. Yes, ah! It's the hell wasp miniature. And that's going to be fun because we're getting a mixture of transparent plastic, uh, for the wings of the hell wasp. And then like your typical, like what you saw today with the your opaque plastic with the white prime on it. Uh, so we'll have some fun getting that painted up, but it's definitely gonna be a two parter because I think we'll focus on the wings next week and then start the body and we'll finish the body and do assembly the second week is sort of how I'm seeing this play itself out. Um, but that should be a lot of fun. And then after that, we will have a break after the next two episodes because I'm going to be traveling and be mm -hmm. up in Victoria. <laughs> and and without our teacher. Yeah. So unless you we'll, we'll have... want to do your, uh, your final. <laughs> That's true. We could try to do the we Albert. Try and do your Albert final. I'll talk to him. Think I'll about see. it. Think I'll about think it. about it. Cause that is all right. Well, let me ask the teacher first. Uh -huh. Is an owlbear something you think could be reasonably done in one episode in one two hour sit? Or would you suggest longer? You could, you could get it the base colors on. You might be able to provided, provided you make sure your paints are thinned enough because that miniature has a lot of texture to it. And what will delay you is if your paints are too thick, because then you're definitely gonna have places where you're constantly poking and missing sections. Mm. So something to think I will, about i will i will talk to trevor about yeah. that and and you know even if it's one of those we do uh two episodes and one right. of them is our regular paint and slay and the other is just like the special right. final part of the owl yeah. bear that we do because i do first off i just like hanging out with trevor and second i do really like the idea of taking that owl bear that i have and making it look like orkira the owl bear uh-huh that would be adorable all right, All right, so I'm going in like... with Drakenhof. I am avoiding the eyes because I don't want the eyes to turn green on me. So basically, I'm just applying the shade onto the body of the Displacer Beast. 
Tentacles and all? Tentacles and all. Gonna give this kitty a little back scratch. There you yeah. go. Although I'm honestly, I'm gonna do the body first and then focus on the tentacles and tail. Any specific reason or is that I just- I just find it's easier because the body has more details on it. So you're gonna find things are pooling up a little bit more. Ah, Whereas that makes sense. The tentacles are smoother, so it's not gonna be such an issue painting that on. Yeah, these abs. Mm -hmm. Yep, these abs. It's a thing. Absolutely. Ha ha ha. Absolutely. Jeez. <laughs> Ugh. I Ugh. Had I had to. I, had I don't to. blame you. I don't blame you. You know, even with these little minis, I, I'm a fan of doing the washes. I know yeah. half the reason I enjoy doing washes is just the the swaths of of just i'm just painting the whole thing that mm -hmm. happen but you know and so yeah we have to be a little more careful with these smaller minis of like i'm gonna avoid the eyes and i'm gonna avoid getting on the base but i still find the washing part is just it's super yeah. super relaxing and and it always the results always make me happy so then you enjoy your wash I do enjoy being washed. It's There's fun. Wrong with it. I, I like it when my minis are are completely washed. But yeah, even even right now where I'm being slightly more cautious and I don't get to do the I'm painting. <laughs> like it's super fun. Sorry, I Helened for a moment. Yeah, it's okay. I think that's why <laughs> Helen is so relatable, because we all have a little bit of Helen in us. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes sometimes you just gotta try to be Helen for a while. You yeah. know, sometimes it's like, it's, I need to just be happy for a little bit. And so I'm yep. just gonna, I'm gonna channel my inner Helen. Mm -hmm. Helen's just gonna be happy she has a pet. Thunder! <laughs> I don't know how happy Thunder is gonna be. <laughs> Thunder's probably gonna be running in the opposite direction while Helen's like, come here, Thunder! Here, kitty, 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 kitty! I mean, that's fair. Yeah. That's super fair. All right, so I have I have a question as I'm getting mm -hmm. close to the wash for the the uh, face. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've even ever thought of this before. Is it worth getting like a small detail brush to wash the face? You can. Yeah, you absolutely can. Because that's what I'm thinking. Because yeah. I am yeah. the teeth if I get on eh. But like the ears and the yeah. eyes, I'm yeah. really proud of how those look. Then, so. then yeah, use a detail brush and just gently blot as opposed to sweep it on. All right. Oh dear. I just did Helen's voice and now I have two cats scratching at my door. <laughs> Are your cats fans of Helen? Apparently. Or or they're they're worried for you. Maybe. They're like, Mommy's in trouble. There's a strange lady in there. Mm -hmm. Did you hear yeah. that strange noise? Let's I go speak figure to them it out. In different voices all the time. I think they just know that I'm being silly if anything. Yeah, there's something about that curl on this tentacle where if I try and start painting it, I start hitting the camera. So sorry about that, folks. I needed to dip out. Okay, it happens. Right, here we go. Look at this. It's a little glossy right now because of the wash, but I will go in with the uh, Mod Podge Matte, which, where is that living? It's living over here. <laughs> where is my matte living? Here we go. So I'm going to go in with this. It's the Mod Podge Ultra Matte. It is nice and matte. In fact, it's what I used on Helen's tentacles. So I'll use this on the Displacer Beast itself, as well as the base, which I also use on Helen's base. And that way it'll bring down the shiny aspect that some of these glosses can have. And But that, I want to make sure that this has time to dry first, because if I go in and do that now, oh, it's going to be a mess. So really you want to give your minis a good at least 12 hours to dry before you start doing your seal coats. Er, er. Um, <laughs> it's Friday, folks. <laughs> sorry. No, not sorry. You know what? That was funny. But once that happens, then you can go in and do the seal coat. And then that way it'll bring the glossiness down. If you so choose, if you like having your displacer beast looking a little flashy, then you could actually keep it as is and do the Mod Podge gloss on it instead. And then you'll have a really snazzy, Ooh. shiny displacer boy or girl, or what have you. 
That is an interesting idea. Like I would kind of like to see that, but I'm definitely going to go matte. I am, yeah. I have always pictured displacer beasts as having that uh, velveteen kind of sheen to them yeah. where it, it, it just hundred percent absorbs the light. So yeah. So. I'm I'm definitely going there, but I think I think a shiny displacer beast, you know, completely out and about and showing off their awesomeness. I think that's actually a cool idea too. Yeah, I'm shiny. <laughs> Look at me now that I'm okay yes. being um being there. visible as I eat you. Yes, I'm just putting my hand behind it to give a little bit of a better contrast between the darkness of the displacer beast and the darkness of the background a little bit. Oops. But yeah, you can see you can see the musculature as opposed to having just gone in with straight black. That would not be playing through as well. Oh. So even though this is technically a black creature, you bring in colors to paint it up and bring out its details. And then it's black, but it's it's interesting yeah. black. It is yeah. textured black. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I will I will get pictures of this to put up mm -hmm. on the internet and on the disc. Uh -huh. On the Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Drink, drink, drink. Got it, got it, got to hydrate. Hydrate or dihydrate. So I will I will put some pictures because mine obviously, uh, but I can definitely say just looking at it now, especially after we put the the wash on, yeah. it is it is 100% a black beast, but it's got that, that texture that most creatures who are black in uh in the wild have like if you look mm -hmm. at panthers oh, they yeah. this is 100 percent that blue black that a panther has yep which is super cool yeah lots of fun very cool stuff very very yeah. cool stuff but that kind of brings us to a close for uh our lovely little thunder and lightning yeah <laughs> look at this it, it is not often that we are early but we, we are we're five minutes early we look are. at that we are so if do we want to do like a general questions like last round of questions before we call it or do we yeah definitely yeah. and um how far away is your hell wasp maybe Leila, i can grab if you can chat with the ch if you can chat with the chat i'll go grab the hell wasp it's I, I will chat with the chat hi chat how you doing hey it's it's NPR time here on Paint and Slay as we finished up our Displacer Beasts and I'm going to be taking last minute questions from all of you if you would like to put those in chat so the wonderful Mars can grab those and we can answer those. Okay, uh, Julie asks, question for Lauren, how much do you feel like you've improved since the first miniature? Oh, 100%. So much improvement. If not in technique, in... Uh, like in the physical part of the technique, definitely in the understanding of how to approach a mini and and what some of the techniques do, um, especially things like dry brushing um, and the, the multiple ways that you can do it. I only knew dry brushing as a thing that someone could do, and now I know how to do it. And that alone is has made my minis. I, I could not have done this mini when we started like the amount of detail work on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. super, super have improved. Uh, Graphic Wolf says naturally black fur and hair will have a blue highlight sheen to it. This mini is perfect for that look. Oh, yes. Yeah, it is super cool. Uh, and Garwar mentions uh, from talking about doing a a chest that looks like one of the in game chests. The Electrum chest would be cooler because it's got Iris on it, Ooh. which is that that's hardcore painting that yeah. could be super cool, but also a little hard, <laughs> but I like the idea a lot. Anyway, hell wasp time. Hell wasp. So like I said, we have kind of, well, multiple parts to this one. As you can see, the wings are that nice transparent. Uh, ooh, where'd you go? <laughs> one just flew away. Uh, so anyways, they're nice and transparent. Oh, it's under your other hand. I see it. Look at the bottom of oh, Iris. Oh, there it is. See, it's so clear. I can't even find it myself. So there's four of these, which we'll work on and give them like a really nice look. And then this is the Hell Wasp itself, body-wise. Hello, lots of yummy texture, which I cannot yeah. wait to have some fun with this one. It's also a neat mix of colors between darker purples and really vibrant reds, and, well, not reds, oranges and yellows in it. So uh, it's gonna be a fun one to paint up with some differentiation in color and texture and techniques. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can even, this is, this is the one thing I'm surprised they did. They normally this would be off of its base and you would put that on later, but this one is secured to the base. Um, hmm. So we're going to have some interesting time painting around it, but luckily the legs are slightly wobbly. 
Uh, but yeah. Ooh, sorry. That's okay. This is this is the next couple weeks. The hell wasp. And do you happen to have a medium creature nearby? Because you, do, you hear wasp and you think about something buzzy, horrible buzzy, but small. Buzzy, 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 bee, yeah. bee, and its stinger is literally the size of the guy's leg. The stinger is the, the part. If if at, you're all thinking, oh, this is not that horrible of a creature. Why do not why do they call it a hell wasp? And then you put the stinger next to your, your medium-sized creature. And it's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah gonna fly away and just be not not good things i mm -hmm. mean helen is a roper that'd be a fight to the death that'd be an Boy. oof that'd yeah, be a hardcore fight helen don't helen. don't get involved with a, a hell wasp don't okay. do it not worth it, <laughs> it and it's with that that i'm gonna say thank you to both <laughs> martin and mars who have yes. been at different points in this show our wonderful moderators thank you to everyone in chat for hanging out with us today um thank you to v as always for being an amazing teacher definitely go check out the discord discord.gg slash idle champions where we have a paint and slay channel where um i think i already put the hell wasp stuff up and if not i will do that today yeah but if not now then when soon uh, so check out the Peyton Slay channel for all the information on the next couple of weeks of Hell Wasps. And I think that's it. We'll see you next encounter. Have Bye. a good weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.